Hi everyone, welcome to IGCSE Study Buddy, where you can revise biology topics from the Cambridge IGCSE syllabus. If you are enjoying these videos so far, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. In this video, you are going to learn part 1 of chapter 21, Biotechnology and Genetic Modification. Biotechnology is using living things like bacteria or cells to make helpful products or solve problems. Making bread using yeast is an example of biotechnology. Yeast helps dough puff up by making tiny bubbles which gives us soft and yummy bread. Genetic modification is changing the DNA of living things like plants or animals to make them have specific traits or do certain things. For example, rice can be modified to have extra vitamin A which helps people in places with vitamin deficiencies stay healthier. Bacteria are the most common and widely used type of microorganisms in biotechnology and genetic modification. Bacteria are useful in biotechnology and genetic modification due to their rapid reproduction rate and their ability to make complex molecules. Additionally, they are useful because there are only few ethical concerns over their manipulation and growth and because of the presence of plasmids. Ethical concerns are relatively limited because bacteria are often simple organisms and their genetic changes are usually well controlled in laboratories. Additionally, bacteria can't feel pain or suffer in the same way animals can. Overall, the ethical concerns are milder compared to more complex organisms. Bacteria are especially useful because they naturally have plasmids. A plasmid is a small circular piece of DNA which can be easily manipulated in the lab to add or modify specific genes, making it simpler to create desired traits. Here are some examples of products made with biotechnology. Biofuels, bread, fruit juice, biological washing powders, lactose free milk, insulin, penicillin, and mycoprotein. So, before we discuss how biofuels and bread is made, we have to understand the role of anaerobic respiration in yeast. Yeast is a microorganism that plays a crucial role in anaerobic respiration. Yeast uses sugar to respire anaerobically and the equation is as follows. Glucose with the help of yeast gives ethanol and carbon dioxide. The balanced chemical equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast is C6H12O6 giving 2C2H5OH plus 2CO2. Energy is also released. Anaerobic respiration allows yeast to produce valuable products like ethanol for biofuels and the carbon dioxide responsible for the rise of dough in bread making. So first biofuels. Biofuel is a type of fuel that's made from living things like plants or waste. It's more environmentally friendly than traditional fuels because it comes from renewable sources and releases fewer harmful emissions when burned. 
plants are used to make ethanol which is used as a biofuel. The plants which provide the sugar are mixed with yeast. The yeast turns the plants into ethanol by undergoing anaerobic respiration. So glucose gives ethanol and carbon dioxide. It's the ethanol that is used as a biofuel. Next, bread. Yeast is mixed with sugar, flour and water and it respires anaerobically to produce carbon dioxide and ethanol. The carbon dioxide bubbles get trapped in the dough, making it rise. This process gives bread its airy texture. Fruit juice production. Pectin is a protein located in plant cell walls. It gives fruits their thickness and makes them difficult to squeeze. Pectinase is an enzyme that breaks down pectin. So if you refer to the visual representation above, the pectinase breaks down the pectin from the cell walls. Pectinase is applied in industries to break down the pectin present in fruit cell walls. This helps make it simpler to extract juice from the fruit. Biological washing powders have enzymes similar to the enzymes in our digestive system which can break down certain biological stains like proteins, for example food stains like egg or meat and even blood stains. The enzyme protease would break down proteins. Fats and oils, for example grease stains from cooking oil or butter. The enzyme lipase breaks down fats and oils. So these enzymes would break down these stains into smaller soluble molecules that can be washed away more easily. Biological washing powders have some benefits. They are good at removing stubborn stains since they break down large insoluble stains into smaller soluble ones. They work well in lower temperatures resulting in energy savings since it doesn't require hot water. Next, lactose free milk. Lactase is used to make lactose free milk. Lactose is a natural sugar found in milk but some people can't digest it well. They are lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerant people might experience tummy troubles like bloating, gas and stomach ache after eating dairy foods. Lactase is an enzyme that breaks down lactose into simpler sugars. When added to milk, lactase breaks down the lactose, turning it into sugars that are easier to digest. Here's a visual representation of lactose being broken down by lactase to help you understand. This process makes the milk suitable for people who are lactose intolerant, allowing them to enjoy milk without discomfort. Before we learn about the next three products of biotechnology, we need to understand what a fermenter is. Fermenters are big containers used by bacteria and fungi to make useful products on a large scale. Fermenters provide a controlled environment with the right conditions for these microorganisms to grow and make these valuable products in large quantities. Some of the useful products made in fermenters are insulin, penicillin and mycoprotein. 
Insulin is made using bacteria. It helps people with diabetes since it helps regulate blood sugar levels. Penicillin is made using a fungus called penicillium. It is an important antibiotic that fights bacterial infections. It works by stopping bacteria from growing or by killing them. Mycoprotein is made using fungi. It is a protein-rich food source used as a meat alternative. Fermenters allow us to control conditions carefully, thereby making lots of the exact microorganisms we want. The conditions that need to be controlled in a fermenter include temperature, pH, oxygen, nutrient supply, and waste products. Maintaining the right temperature in a fermenter is vital. It affects reactions and microbe growth. Too hot or cold can harm or slow down microorganisms. pH is about acidity or alkalinity. Microbes prefer different pH levels. Managing pH ensures microbes grow well and produce what we want. Oxygen control is important in fermenters. Some microorganisms need oxygen and some don't. Right oxygen levels help microorganisms grow well and produce what we want. Microorganisms need nutrients, that is sugars, proteins, minerals, to grow and make things. Nutrient levels must be controlled for strong growth and maximum production. Microorganisms make waste when they grow and carry out metabolic processes. Too much waste can stop them from growing and making products. Getting rid of waste properly is important to keep the microorganisms healthy. That concludes part 1 of chapter 21, Biotechnology and Genetic Modification. Are you enjoying our videos? Are they helping you? Here is a way you can show your appreciation and support our continued efforts. You may use YouTube Super Thanks to send us thanks. Hope this video helped you. Please share your thoughts and suggestions in the comment section. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to IGCSE Study Buddy for more biology revision videos. Bye.